Yes, I'm about to start the recording. Good day, everyone. Uh, this is one of those videos that I think everyone who calls himself a Christian uh, in Nigeria first uh, because uh, this video my videos are generally made first of all because of my my accent uh, uh, forgive me if you if you watch this video from other parts of the world what I'm going to discuss is uh, is applicable to everyone that calls himself a Christian uh, in the world and everyone that is actually interested in in learning about the God of the Bible uh, but because of my accent I, I know generally speaking uh, the people of Nigeria and those uh, in West Africa they are likely to 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 quickly grasp what what i say a little more clearly so just as paul uh was concerned so heavily for the jews who according to him were very serious but without true knowledge of god uh, let me tell you that I'm concerned for the people of Nigeria. I'm concerned first and foremost, pardon me for the selfishness, I'm concerned for first and foremost for my Yoruba people. And the reason will be very clear very shortly. Because when you come to Nigeria, when you come to West Africa and you say you are looking for Christians, uh, the, the most uh, fociferous that you are going to get, the loudest you are going to get in Christianity, uh, they generally all bear Yoruba names. They generally all speak Yoruba language. And unknown to them, they have... Uh, they have injected into the Yoruba mainstream terrible poison about Christianity, ideas and teaching that are not derived from the Bible, but because the Yoruba elites are at the vanguard of what they think is Christianity, people accept them people listening to them and they deceive themselves if, if this person who has a first class degree in mathematics is teaching the bible if this one that has a doctorate degree in mathematics is a geo if the one that has a master's degree in architecture or the one that is a medical doctor is teaching the Bible. What else could they be, be teaching than the truth? That is actually the problem of the Yoruba person in Nigeria. Sadly, this problem, the poison rather, has been infused into virtually every group, not only in Nigeria, not only in West Africa, in much of Africa, and many other parts of the world. The Nigerian so-called Christian, they deceive themselves, saying that they are the trigger, the trigger arm of the gun that God was using 
to evangelize the world. And they draw your attention to the hundreds of thousands or possibly millions that attend the programs of these so-called churches. I know you, if you have listened to some of my videos, that phrase will not be strange to you that I call them so-called churches. And that is actually the reason why this video is important. Many people, when they listen to my video, uh, except God has mercy on you, you ask yourself a lot of questions. You, uh, perhaps, if not for the sentences that I make, you generally think I'm a madman. Uh, some have reacted so terribly. They've called me names. And generally speaking, uh, I take the name calling as, uh, as accolades, but there's nothing to be happy about it. The issue is that those who call names, those who react very angrily that I call their so-called men of God, servants of Satan, the last thing they generally do is to take me up on the Bible. That is the last thing they do, is to take me up and say, yeah, you say so-so person uh, serves Satan, but this is where you are wrong according to the Bible. They generally don't do it. They generally, because if they take their Bible, if you take your Bible, it does not take long. Really. The moment you take your Bible and you read yourself of the of the aura, of the deception, that Nigerian so-called men of God are actually not men of God or may actually not be men of God. Let's start, start from there. The moment you take that step and you just pick the Bible and you pray, you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you to understand doctrines, ideas, these foundational teachings of the Bible, the teachings about the Lord Jesus Christ, the teachings about the Holy Spirit, the teachings about God the Father, the teachings about sin and about forgiveness of man, the teachings about how man can approach to God, who can stand be, 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 be before you and God, between you and God. The moment you start reading about those things in the Bible, it does not take long to see that Mr. Kumui cannot be saying the same thing. That Mr. Kumui is not saying the same thing that the Bible says about Christ, for example. It doesn't take long to come to the conclusion that something is terribly wrong. When Mr. Oyedepo says that he brings live snakes and scorpions, live scorpions, live snakes, from the bodies of people he administers his anointing oil anointing oil so to speak it doesn't take long to see that when you listen to dr adeboye in first thing supposedly in first thing god's power which he thinks are actually resident in his own body. Infesting God's power on the chair he sat on, on the table he prayed on, on the combs he used to, 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 to comb his hair, on clothing materials. When you listen to somebody like that, Telling you that it was God that told him that he must not remove his singlet, his inner wear, so that he might use his own inner wear to, to bless people. It doesn't take long to see 
that the only thing that Dr. Adiboye does, the only thing the man does, is to do everything, everything, to obscure the Lord Jesus Christ. The glory, the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ is the main purpose of the Bible. It doesn't take much to see that much of what Dr. Adeboye does is simply to make sure you do not see Christ. Now, once you come to that, it does not take long to say, no, this is not a servant of Christ. It's as simple as that. A servant of Christ, his main job is to hoist to the heavens, even beyond the heavens, because Christ is higher than the heavens. That is what the Bible says. The main job, the only job of a servant of Christ is to proclaim only the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you listen to these people, it doesn't take time to see that something is definitely wrong the moment you start reading the Bible. As I said, and I have said it so many times, your best way out, wherever you are listening to me, wherever you are watching this video, is to pick the Bible. That's what God asks people to do. In the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 11, God commended the people of Berea. He called them noble because they checked out the teachings of Paul against the writings of the prophets of the Old Testament. God is the same God. He's expecting you as an individual that he has given birth today to see this video. He's expecting you to do only one thing. To go on your knees, pick your Bible, check. Check. And once you begin to confirm that what Mr. Soso and So teaches are not supported by the Bible, God expects you, the next thing he expects you to do is to turn 180 degree, not to turn a little, not to turn a little, you are to turn violently, violently away from everybody that teaches things the Bible does not support. That is the only choice you have. Somewhere in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah described God that is the God that hides himself. That idea, that idea runs through the Bible, and you have to get it. That God is a God, you are a God that hides yourself. O God of Israel, the Savior. You are a God that hides yourself. O God of Israel, the Savior. The supporting fast to that is in the book of Jeremiah, where God himself was talking and saying that you shall seek for me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Thou shall search for me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Jesus, God in human flesh, when he was here, said exactly the same thing. That you cannot be my follower if you do not hate your father, if you do not hate your mother, if you do not hate your wife, if you do not hate your husband, if you do not hate your children, in fact, if you do not hate yourself, that you cannot be a servant. So seeking for God is actually the duty that God has given man since the time of the fall of man.
that you should seek for him. Not for blessing. God has blessed you that you could hear the sound of my voice. That is, you must recognize that, first of all, as a blessing of immeasurable value. That you can hear the sound of my voice. That you can see the light of the sun. That you can appreciate the beauty of the flowers. That you can actually perceive the aroma of perfumes. That you could eat. That you could drink. He has done everything that a God would do. If you seek him for his own sake, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the only person that stands between man and God, he has promised that he will save you. And when he saves you, he will teach you about himself. He will guide you to the truth. And the truth we only believe in, in you. Because Christ said he is the truth. I am the way. The truth. And the life. Those three. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No person comes to God except through me. Nobody that is on the way that does not have the truth. Mind those three. That, those three aspects of that one single equation. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you, have, if you are in the way, you will have the truth. And you will have life. If anybody is in the way, he will have the truth. Because it's the same person. I am the way. The truth and the life. If you are knowing the truth, you are knowing the way. If you are knowing the way, you are knowing the truth, and you do not have life, because it's the same person, it's the same, it's the same, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, uh, what you've listened to is uh, is an aspect of how you uh, how you are to check the teaching uh, i know as i said generally speaking uh, many people when they hear me uh, lump uh, charismatic and pentecostal uh, pastors together when I lump them together and I say uh, these people are actually servants of Satan uh, the little that I've just said is the is what you might call the Bible test what are the Bible tests that you use so generally most of the videos that I've done up to this stage is uh, through the Bible test route. Testing what the people say. Those people, what they say with their own mouth. Testing them against what the Bible says. There's another way of actually checking them up. Checking up the Pentecostal and Charismatic people in the area of their origin where do they come from where did pentecostal and charismatic beliefs come from actually if you if you attend the deeper life for example or or redeem or winners chapel or you listen to Benihin or Kenneth Copeland 
there's a there's a group of people you would have had you would have had a, a, a people they called generals uh, that shouldn't be strange to any of you people who attend or follow these people you you hear they, they say that so 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 person these are the generals Uh, the generals are supposed to be people who had done great exploits. That's how they put it for God. People who have done great exploits in the past, general, generally. Of course, uh, their, their current leaders also, they call them generals too. Um, so this series of videos is about the generals. Uh, generally speaking, dead ones. Because they actually were the basis, the origins. The people who actually started what they call the Pentecostal arm of Christianity, the charismatic arm of Christianity, giving you the impression that there's actually anything like that in Christianity. Uh, if, if we are talking of, if we are talk, when we are talking of generals, uh, today I will not just be talking of a mere general, I will be talking of a field marshal. Because if Charles Palm or Will, uh, William Seymour, or John Graham Lake, John G. Lake, was actually, if those people were actually generous, then John Alexander Dowie was a field marshal. So, John Alexander Dowie was so central to the formation of what people call Pentecostalism today, that we need to study him. We need to know who the man was. Everyone who has anything to do with Christianity, who thinks he is a Christian, needs to know who John Alexander Dowie was. As I said, subsequent videos will be devoted to characters such as Charles Pam and William Seymour and surely John G. Lake. But today, this particular video is devoted to their boss, to the person who taught them their beliefs, the one they regarded as, the lead, as their leader, John Alexander Dowie. Let me give a brief introduction to who John Ale Alexander Dowie was. John Alex Alexander Dowie was, was an Australian of Scottish origin. In actual fact, he did his education in, in Scotland. He was a pastor uh, in the church they called the, con the congregation. He was a pastor in various rural churches in Australia in the later half of the, I think that's the 18th century, in 1870, 1865, 1870, he was a rural pastor. He's somebody that we need to study very well we need to the moment you get who john who john uh, alexander dawi was the moment you get who john alexander dawi was uh you will flee you will flee from every pentecostal contraption the moment you actually realize who John Alexander Dowie was as a person, 
who he was. And as I said, if you if you stop this video here, which you, which which you may, all you all you need to do is call your. If you have never heard the name before, call your assistant pastor in Redeem and say that somebody spoke about John Alexander. That we had had heard the name before. If anybody has anything, any knowledge in in in, in winners or in in Redeem or following or following Michael Konko or any of these people. Ask them who John Alexander Dowie was. They will tell you that they were they are followers of John Alexander Dowie. And that is actually the truth. They are followers of John Alexander Dowie. So if you go to if you attend any of their churches, you are actually not indirectly, directly follower of John Ale Alexander Dowie. If, as I said, if Charles Palm was a general, then his teacher must be a field marshal. So, John Alexander Dawi was a pastor, a rural church pastor in various rural places in Australia in the later part of the 19th century. Uh, Mr. Dawi felt that the rural places, the churches in those rural places were not good enough for him and he resigned his appointment to become an independent pastor in Sydney, in the city, he came to the city in Australia. And that was in 1879. Uh, he got to the city and he knew that uh to make it in the city you have to be a different pastor and he he, he was basically a rabble rouser he was a politician in, in kasok as i generally call them today and uh, the issue at hand in 1879 was alcohol was liquor so mr dawi started a temperance movement a movement that railed against alcohol against the drinking of beer and therefore he became a champion somebody who led protest against the drinking of alcohol whatever it was at the same time mr dawi started getting involved with spiritualists. He started getting involved with shamans. He started buying books and studying books, reading, written by shamans and spiritualists, by magic people. By 1879, by around uh, 18, 1880, he got to a stage. L let me say this. The sources of most of what I'm will be talking about are actually the writings of Mr. Dawi himself, his personal letters, and his sermons. So you, you can actually confirm this by going to the right sources. And let me start the quote from one of his letters uh, in the personal letters of John Alexander that we published in 1912. Uh, for your information, John Alexander Dawi uh, died in 1907. So about five years after he died, one of his very close friends published his letters, his personal letters. So uh, le let me quote from one of the portion of one of the letters. Now, friends, I'm quoting. Now, friends, I made many such tests. Is referring to tests by spiritualists, shamans, shamans test. I tested these mediums on many points, and I got to know them and to know their ways so well that at last they all heard I was the biggest medium 
of them all. That is Mr. Dawi talking about himself. I made many such tests. I tested the mediums on many points and I got to know them and to know their way so well that at last they all heard I was the biggest medium of them all. Let me break down what Mr. Dawi is saying about himself. By 1882, Mr. Dawi had learned so much about spiritism, about the beliefs and practices and the rituals of shamanism that he was now regarded as the highest shaman in Sydney, in Australia. What an introduction to the founder, the grandfather of Pentecostalism. As Mr. Dawi was leading his so-called temperance protest, he was at the same time undergoing religious training with shamans, reading and participating in shamanic worship and practices and beliefs at the same time to the level that the shamans of Australia started regarding him according to his own letter started regarding him and please on this I must tell you Mr. Mr. Dawi was not boasting because there were various other documents court records of various shamans contesting with Mr. Dawi and the words of those letters, the court papers, they are not flattering about John Alexander Dawi. What John Alexander Dawi had done was that by 1880, 1881, 1882, he had one of the largest libraries one of the largest personal libraries in Australia on occultism, on shamanism, on spiritism. The tricks, the beliefs, the practices of the shamans. He was now a master shaman at the same time. The only question that I could ask at this stage is simply to ask you a very simple one question. Is mastering the practices and the beliefs of shaman by participating in their worship? Is it is it an, are, are those aspects of what Christ said his followers should do? Do you have you do you have anywhere in your Bible where Peter or Paul actually participated with shamans of their time, filled their library with books on magic, on incantations for any purpose whatsoever. The record shows that soon John Alexander Dawi was leading seances in Sydney and in Melbourne, in Australia. In the various cities of Australia, by 1880, 1881, 1882, John Alexander Dawi was leading seances. Now, for purposes of some of my people, that this might be a little strange to seances are where uh, you, you see some of such things today in Pentecostal churches. Uh, a leader, and you, uh, it's actually from Hinduism. It's, it's an aspect of Hinduism. Where, where somebody touches your forehead and you fall and some of them, they fall like that for another three or four days, they don't wake up. 
very often they wake up in their sleep in their stupor they now begin to give messages which they which they say is from god of course we know sciences and those things are from satan so if i can draw your attention anywhere you have seen people falling like you see in in, in polynesian church people falling and 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 just losing consciousness those are sciences the bible does not have example of it it doesn't happen to christians it does not happen among christians it's from the occult therefore the glory dome on airport road in abuja and every establishment where people fall and they lose their consciousness where they think that uh, they are being visited by God because of such acts. They are basically all establishments of the devil. They are they are satanic enclaves. They are centers of sorcery and satanism. So let me introduce you to some of the some of the inventions of Mr. Uh, Dawi uh, into Christianity uh, so that you know exactly how uh, I won't be able to talk much so that the video will not be too long I'll simply touch just a few of uh, the of the inventions of John Alexander Dowie as it as as he as he formed his religion as he formed his faith and his beliefs uh, and I'll be talking to a large extent on his uh, teachings on healings having mastered a lot of what the uh what the shamans of his day taught one of the beliefs of mr dawi was that diseases and sicknesses all had spiritual sources if you if you are feeling fever for example uh the source is a demon if you have any stomach ache is a spirit that is uh, troubling you cancers are by spirits any and every form of sickness and disease was formed by was from a demon uh, for those of you who attend these so-called churches that shouldn't be that should that that shouldn't be news you know in pentecostalism the belief is that all sicknesses and disease are actually spiritual and that is the that is the reason why you do not see a pentecostal church no matter how rich no matter how affluent they do not establish hospitals because they are followers of john alexander dawi and john alexander alexander dawi hadn't haven't uh, convinced charles palm that all diseases all sicknesses and diseases have spiritual origin even their successors in 2021 will never open a hospital will never stretch out a hand to help any sick person except by supposedly praying for him 
So the whole world may, I, and that is uh, actually part of the reason why you see the campaign against uh, the vaccines, the COVID vaccine, this vaccine, and the other thing, all those things. They are the successors, the inheritors to the beliefs and teachings of John Alexander Dawi. And of course, those beliefs and those teachings were purely from the occult. They were not from Christianity. There is no way, nowhere in the Bible where you will see the Bible, where you see Christ teaching that all diseases and sicknesses were from some demon. There is no such thing. In healing diseases and sicknesses, therefore, Mr. Dawi actually invented, as I said, a lot, many of which you, you still see today in these churches. Uh, I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly six different inventions of Mr. Dawi. And one of those inventions was that was Mr. Dawi using what they call placemen. Placemen. He deliberately placed some people in his congregation who will give false testimonies of the healing that Mr. Dawi had performed on them in the past in some distant place at some distant time. These people generally dress as reverend doctors. They were actually church people. Of course, many of them were bricklayers, they were carpenters, they were, they were cleaners in real life. But in order to sell the deception of John Alessada Dawi, they, they all wore colors. They all wore religious colors during those services. So from nowhere during the service, somebody will raise up his hand and say, yes, yes, yes. In social place in Chicago, in social place in Philadelphia, my son had social disease. And it was this pastor that healed him. Of course, that will get the attention of everybody. So the use of placement, if you, if you attend some of these uh, pastor's uh, services today, you hear some of those placement, even up to today. Fake people recruited only for the purposes of giving fake testimonies. And, and of course, this issue of false testimonies is uh, that's part of the main... Uh, item of trade of Mr. Dawi. Uh, let me say that Mr. Dawi actually invented the, the public healing scenario that you see today, popularized by William Kumuyi and uh, Benny Hinn and their type. Where they are healings generally happen in stadiums in in front of large audiences making sure that, that that some particular music is going on at the at the time uh, that 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 was that was an invention of john alexander dawi another invention of Mr. Dawi was what he called a uh, distant cure. Distant cure. At the beginning of uh, this, this is how this this is how this one goes. At the beginning of a worship service, a total stranger, mind my language, total stranger, runs into the pulpit from nowhere 
crying about the desperate sickness, the, de the desperate sick situation of his, uh, of his son or wife or, or husband some hundred miles away. He would tell the congregation he just received a telegram. You know, in those days, uh, telephone was not really that. Uh, I don't think it has been invented. So he would just tell the people, oh, I just re received a telegram from my village. My wife is terribly sick. She's about dying. The prophet should pray for him. And then the prophet will stop all the other things they are uh, the the slate for that day. And he will lead the congregation in the prayer for the sick. About two hours later, the same stranger will run into the congregation again, jumping up, shouting, stomping, that he had just received another telegram from his village that his wife who was at the de at the gate of death two hours ago had been healed of course everybody will will shout and clap another invention of mr Dawi was is the is the is the use of fake cripple the use of fake cripple uh, Mr. Dawi invented the practice of bringing people who could walk, but, but they, will, they, will, they will bring them in in, in wheelchairs, uh, dress them in some special ways, put them in front of the, of the pulpit. And uh, the, the prophet, the apostle prophet, who will now come during the service and perform the miracle of healing the cripple. And the man or the woman who had been wheelchair bound will simply be commanded to, to rise up. And he will now spring up like, like a loaded spring. He will jump up and everybody will shout about the power of the prophet apostle well there, there's one that uh, there's one infection of mr dawi that you are likely to have heard of and that is the the use of coughing yes coughing yes where they put uh, live people somebody who is alive they put him in the coffin and they bring him to the front of the church during service. Uh, for the prophet to to raise from the dead. John Alexander that we invented this using the uh, actors and actresses. And uh, those kind of people. So a coffin, a coffin will be rushed to the front of the of the church, to the pulpit during service. And then, of course, there will be obvious distress from fami supposed family members about the about the sudden death of their beloved relative crying manufactured tears and of course uh, at the end of the service the the apostle will now perform the function of uh, the duty of uh, raising the dead so mr alexander that we did this so much uh, between 1880 1881 1882 to around 1900 uh, of course, uh, one other thing that Mr. Darwin invented was what you could call spiritual showdown. Uh, Mr. Darwin had the habit of uh, challenging uh, the witches and wizards 
the witches and wizards in the cities wherever he went to to, con to conduct his crusade to come out for contest if you are old enough you know the person that used to do this in nigeria was uh, uh what was uh, this man in in benin city who who, who brought this evil into nigeria He too used to do things like that, performing spiritual showdown stunts. That they had so much power that they will confront the witches and wizards right in the open market for a power showdown, for a contest, for a power contest. And of course, uh, and you know every such contest. It's only for the glory of the prophet, the pastor. The devil, the devil is very, very smart. The devil is very smart. When Idahosa, yes, I've just remembered the name, Benson Idahosa. When Idahosa mounted such uh, stunts, almost the whole of Benin City believed that uh, the man was, uh, was, uh, was virtually Jesus. But we all know the way he died, like chicken, at the age of 62. After the devil used him and destroyed him. That was an invention also of John Alexander Dawi. The fake spiritual showdown. Another invention, of course, of Mr. Dawi was the media the publicity uh, you, you you see you see this much today in factually every one of these pentecostal churches and ministries uh, you see them promoting signs and wonders uh, is is that is the pastime of uh, william kumuye for for example is for signs and wonders you you you, you should come and, and witness and, and 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 experience signs and wonders that was uh, the publicity the show the showmanship and of course we we know the christians of uh, 1880 the real christians of 1880 1870, 1890, 1900. They were never fooled. John Alexander, that we never fool the true Christians of those days. They were never fooled because they knew the man was a was a charlatan. But of course, that is not the same thing for people of our own time, because very very often. Most of you hearing me, basically, uh, most people are confused when they hear me. Because uh, how do you now say that the Pentecostal uh, and charismatic people, they are not Christians? When in actual fact, most people for the past 40, 45 years have never heard of any other group mentioning the name of Jesus. So whatever whatever they say, therefore, whatever they teach must be Christianity. That is the belief of uh, most people, very sadly. Whereas in actual fact, these are the successors, the disciples of Charles Fox Palm. Who was a student, a disciple, a follower of John Alexander Dawi? Let me close this by telling you that John Alexander Dawi was convicted of so many crimes. After he was expelled from his uh, from his commune 
the so-called Sound City in Chicago in 1906. Uh, he died a year later. He and his disciples were convicted of so many murders, so many deceptions, so many misrep 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 misr